I was challenged not only to play City Skylines for 24 hours straight, but to use every single DLC and content creator pack in one city within that time. Oh, and to reach Megalopolopolis, but I'm a four times world record holder in City Skylines speedruns, often achieving this milestone in under two hours, so that should be no sweat, right? If I failed this challenge, I would have to eat an entire tablespoon of the most foul, repulsive sh shit ever to be incorrectly labeled as food, Marmite. Have well over 2,000 hours in this game, I thought this would be a walk in the park. Little did I know that I was doomed from the start. Let's see if you can spot my failures. I live streamed the challenge over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash chodyybq, come say hi. And a community member suggested I use a map from the latest Plazas and Pomegranates DLC. So I made sure that I had a vanilla setup, chose the coastal gem map as it had everything I would need to make use of the DLCs that needed trains and ocean access, as well as space for an airport, and I pressed go. I wanted to get into using districts and themes to get the content creator packs like mid-century modern and high-tech buildings going right away, but you don't unlock districts until the worthy village milestone, so these first few minutes were just about getting our city set up for success. Water and power were pretty straightforward. I couldn't commit to a poop lake yet, as we didn't have the tile open that we needed, so our poop water was dumped into the ocean. I used a water tower for water into the city and decided to work with green power as much as possible. So wind turbines to start. Using dirt roads and lowering budgets helped balance money in the early game. I unlocked the little hamlet, worthy village and a tiny town milestones without breaking a sweat. Now it was time to unlock another tile and give the people what they wanted. Poop. Lake. This new tile also held plenty of resources and space for me to make use of the Industries DLC. But if I didn't want my industry traffic driving through my small, peaceful residential area, causing tailbacks, traffic jams, and the supply chain to dissolve into a frenzied, jumbled mess of chaos and despair, I had to create a new exit from the highway. And we all know that I'm a pro at interchanges, right? What felt like ages later, the deed was done. We had a new highway exit, our first DLC integrated into the map, and our two areas were connected successfully. But surely I had used up so much precious time. I was falling behind. Out of 27 possible DLCs and content creator packs, I had only used one. It was time to panic. It was one hour into the run. I was fine. While we watch the city grow from here, why don't I explain these DLCs and what trying to make use of every single one of them entails. At the time of recording, there are 11 full DLCs available for the game and none of them should be an issue to bring into the city. Some we will have to use specific parts of the DLC because we can't use others. For example, Snowfall. We didn't choose a Snowfall map, which negates us using the snow related items, but we can use trams instead. You will see those soon. Then there are the 17 content creator packs to consider. A few of them are centered around growable buildings. University City and Art Deco, for example, will only grow in your regular districts that aren't set to a different content creator pack theme. Art Deco buildings only exist for certain levels of the buildings and University City buildings will only spawn after you have built a university. The mid-century modern content creator packs also provide residential buildings, but you actively set a district to have them zone in. Some content creator packs provide buildings that you place down manually. These ones would be the easiest to implement. Then the most difficult to implement would be the two I didn't own. For some unknown reason, past Toady never saw fit to buy the deluxe edition content creator pack, but we'll see the solution to this a little bit later. First, let's get you up to speed on the stadiums content creator pack. Stadiums European club pack brought four sports stadiums to the game that were based on actual real world stadiums around Europe. This content creator pack was only sold between October 18th, 2016 and September 28th, 2017. There is no longer a legitimate way to get this pack and as I only started playing cities in 2019, it just wasn't going to happen. So I do not consider failing to use the 
this pack a failure of my overall challenge. But I want to make use of each of the 11 DLCs and the other 16 content creator packs to consider this a success. So let's check back in on that progress. A wise, totally real, and definitely not made up for this part of the video man once said, when there's progress, there's deep progress. Tornadoes, gang. There's tornadoes. One of the DLCs offered for this game is aptly called Natural Disasters, and so I suffered a good few disasters through this run. The first proper disaster was this tornado, and you can see the path of destruction that it left. But luckily, the emergency services I had in place got up, did their thing, and the city made it through just fine. It was time to get some high density in the city, which meant jobs in both the high density commercial and the offices that The Sims would need university level education for, and I needed to use the campus DLC. So I did my best at building an interesting way to get on and off of this main road using measured road placement, calculated curves, and a few avenue style roads to create a visually appealing layout. The intention was to integrate the various campus buildings through the high density zoning that would be brought in, which you'll see happens as we move along. I brought in the Park Life DLC with an amusement park first, built on the flat area that met the cliff edge. The idea of having like a Ferris wheel or a lookout tower at the top of a cliff overlooking the ocean reminded me of an old roller coaster tycoon map, so I went for it. The next DLC to get its stamp on the city was Mass Transit, a DLC that is overall beloved by the community. One of the more whimsical methods of transportation it offers is blimps, so of course I had to bring them on the scene. At this point in the run, some short tram lines were the only other public transit I had put down, so the city was in pretty dire need. We had just reached 15,000 people in the city, and those 15,000 people needed to get to and from work somehow, so why not take a blimp? You will also see me turn on the educational blimps policy, which meant that instead of displaying giant advertisements on the sides of the blimps, they showed educational things like, you know, pictures of broccoli. Somehow that helps your citizens education level up faster. What it doesn't help is the impending complete annihilation. That wasn't here yet, just another tornado. Don't get me wrong, these tornadoes sucked, but I had been good enough about getting the shelters down and emergency services available afterwards that we recovered from them without too much loss. As far as disasters go, the worst was absolutely yet to come. But not before we sneak in some more DLCs and content creator packs. Next up was the concerts DLC. I placed the main concert area here on the beach and eventually filled this beach up with other buildings to really give it a touristy beachy vibe because beaches like beachy vibes, right? One of the easiest content creator packs to implement was the vehicles of the world pack. To use this, all I had to do was go to a few services and change the vehicles that they sent out to be the ones from this pack. My favorite of these? Well, the luxury hearse is pretty slick. At this point, our population was around 18,000 sims and the end goal, Megalopolopolis, needed 70,000. So I set to work laying down more roads with care. I really did want this city to look great when it was done. Usually my whole shtick is pretty cities. I did what I could with the vanilla setup here. This area would eventually include the high tech buildings content creator pack, as well as a few buildings from the art deco and university city packs. I made the area as walkable as possible, trying to be considerate of the broke university students and brought the tram stops in as well. Below and to the left of where I'm building this next section, you'll see buildings from the Pearls of the East pack and I made sure to include a couple buildings from the Modern Japan pack here as well. I wanted that little area to feel like somewhere you could take the kids for a day out kind of thing. Then where I'm building became our usage of the After Dark DLC. I asked Twitch chat if they would rather tourism or leisure specialty for the commercial buildings and of course they said leisure because that made it our red light district. Every viable city in city skylines needs a red light district, Avi. 
Oh, and hey, hey, you watching this right now, before we dive into the plazas and pomegranates DLC, have you spotted my failure yet? Let me know in the comments if you have. Tell me that you made it 10 minutes into the video and you already know what I've done to completely ruin this entire challenge. Now, the most recent set of content released for cities included the plazas and pomegranates DLC. And quite frankly, I love it. It allows you to zone an entire area where civilian cars are not allowed and includes these funky artsy buildings that zone in and grow wall to wall style. I used dirt roads here to plan out a design for our pedestrian roads and landed on this star looking duber madu. Do you like it? I connected it to the outside roads and zoned a pretty healthy mixture of all the zone types including both high and low density residential because for some reason I think I was worried about traffic in my pedestrian area. Moving right along. And into the airport's DLC. Another recent release and another big hit for me. As a former airline employee, I have a bunch of fun every time I bring this DLC into a city, but boy howdy, am I ever awful at designing an airport. And I feel like this airport is really no exception, but I did what I could after a lot of hours of being awake, like 20 or something. I got the airport up and functional, eventually it reached three stars and I created an airline, but before the city got much further, I faced a potentially run ending make or break moment in the history of this city whose name I have been completely avoiding until now. And I'm still going to avoid, but look at this. A tsunami has struck the city. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. Yep. That's right, a high level tsunami had been summoned by the city skylines gods and it was headed our way. Or well, it was already here. As we watch this unfold, take note of the population at this point. 36,000 people living in the city. I called everyone back to the shelters and I did what I could, but it, this was absolutely devastating. And gang, I was tired. I had already been at this for hours and hours, entertaining a Twitch chat while I was at it. I hadn't eaten, I hadn't slept, I was a monster. We were halfway to the population we needed and had used almost every DLC. And then this bloody tsunami hit. It was fine. I mean, it wasn't fine, but the city made it through. You can see how extensive the damage was. By the worst of the tsunami, the population had plummeted to just 15,000 people, most of which were huddled together in emergency shelters that were quickly running out of resources. I had to lower budgets, turn off a few buildings, be careful with what I bulldozed, and watch the emergency helicopters like a hawk. But eventually, the citizens of this unnamed city banded together and came through. It was time to redouble efforts and race to Megalopolopolis with the time that I had left. I did what I could to build this next section with it not looking like complete trash, but I'll level with you. It's not my best work. Lots of wiggly wobbly roads, lots of zoning, wee little sections off to the side wherever they can fit in, but I was hell bent and determined. I was going to have played City Skylines for 24 hours straight, reach the Megalopolopolopolis milestone, and use every single DLC and content creator pack currently available. And my city was going to look pretty darn decent through it too. Wasn't I? I did it. My friends, I did it. The milestone popped. I had 70,000 people in my city. But did I have all the DLCs? Let's go through them. Going down the list by order of release date. We have March 10th, 2015, the first release of City Skylines. Well, this is it. On that same day, the deluxe edition was released and we put down this right here, the Brandenburg Gate from the deluxe edition. September 24th, 2015, After Dark released and this district right here became a leisure district and these buildings 
are part of that DLC. February 20th, 2016, the Snowfall DLC released and it gave us trams, which we used in this city. On June 9th, 2016, the Match Day DLC released, which gave us this stadium. On September 1st, 2016, the Art Deco pack released, which contained buildings like this one. On November 29th, 2016, the Natural Disasters DLC came out. You saw the disasters in action, but here is an emergency response building disaster response unit as well. On the same November 29th, 2016, High Tech Buildings was released and it gave us buildings like this TV station right here. March 22nd, 2017 released the Pearls of the East pack with these buildings. On May 18th, 2017, the Mass Transit DLC released and it contained these blimps. On August 17th, 2017, the Concerts pack released with it, this concert area. On October 19th, 2017, the European Suburbia pack released and all of these buildings are from that pack. On the same October 19th, 2017, Green Cities was released and it gave us these buildings here. May 24th, 2018, we were given Park Life DLC with this amusement park and this city park. October 23rd, 2018, we were given the Industries DLC shown here by this forestry industry and this ore industry. On May 21st, 2019, the University City Pack was released and it included houses like these ones here. On the same May 21st, 2019, we were given the Campus DLC shown by our campus buildings here. November 7th, 2019, Modern City Center was released and it gave us commercial buildings like these ones right here. On March 26th, 2020, Sunset Harbor was released and it gave us the fishing industry shown by these buildings. Also on March 26, 2020, the Modern Japan pack was released and it had buildings like these ones. On May 21st, 2021, we got the Bridges and Piers pack and it gave us bridges like this one. On that same day, the train stations pack was released and it gave us train stations like this one. On January 25th, 2022, we were given the airports DLC shown right here. On January 25th, 2022, we were also given the Vehicles of the World pack where you can change the type of vehicles that are spawned from certain services like the police station spawning this command center. Most recently, September 14th, 2022, we were given the plazas and pomegranates DLC, and that is shown here with our pedestrian area. On the same day, September 14th, 2022, we were given the mid-century modern pack, and those houses have grown in over here. And finally, on that same September 14th, 2022, the Seaside Resorts pack was released shown by all these resorts along our beach. So what are we missing? What's the big failure here? Have you caught it yet? I'm sure you've caught it. On January 25th, 2022, the map pack was also released and it contained new maps for us to choose from. But you may recall that I was sabotaged at the beginning of this challenge when someone from my chat, let's call them Foot Tickler 69 suggested that we use a map from the newest release of maps that came with the plazas and pomegranates update. And so we chose Coastal Gem instead of any of the maps from the Maps Pack DLC. So being nothing but a man of my word, I said, okay, I failed. I'll eat the tablespoon of Marmite. And it went about as well as you can expect. <laughs> the burp happened. Oh, the burp happened. That tastes like Marmite. But what do you think, YouTube? Would you consider this a success? If you want to see more challenges like this, subscribe to the channel. If you've made it this far, you've probably enjoyed the video, so a thumbs up makes sense too. If you want to see a different type of challenge where I take a community member's City Skylines save and I beautify it the way that I would beautify things, click on the video on the screen now. Gang, I will catch you next time.